I'm Stephen Trask, and I create music. That was spectacular. Thank you. Thank so, you. <laughs> so I came to your panel earlier today, and we have to start with the cheese meter. What, what's the cheese meter? The cheese meter? I'm not really sure what the cheese meter is. I, 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 um, the, you know, I, I think if you're sounding cheesy, I guess, you know, like you want to write sentiment, but you don't want it to be cheesy. Um, I don't use a cheese meter. No, but your collaborator, Peter Yanowitz, he uses meter. the cheese meter. Does he use I, the cheese meter on things that you guys are working on together? Um, yeah, that's private. <laughs> no, I, um, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I tip the cheese meter. I would say not, no. no. Um, so talk, talk to me a little bit about what you and Peter are, are working on right now. You have some musicals in production. We have, well, production is probably a, a weird, weird, in development, I would say in development. Development. Um, we have two musicals. Uh, one we've been working on forever, which is a musical based on the movie Clueless. And we've been working on it for a long time. We've been through a couple of book writer teams, uh, neither of which really worked out. But through it all, um, and especially I think because we weren't getting what we needed from book writers, we've developed a lot of songs that have had staying power and have really told the story and have bridged that gap that you have to in music, musical theater between a song and a number. Like a song is just something you sing, but a number is a thing you stage. And there's dancing and, and, or, or movement and something happens to the characters. And, and in writing our songs, we also conceived of them as, it's almost like if you're writing a song and you're also conceiving the rock video at the same time. Like you, we pictured it on stage, what was going on. Um, and we're in the process right now of kind of taking over the project. We've taken it back, we're taking our material back from the original producers. And we're, gonna, we're actually going kind of DIY, raising our own capital. Um, we've got a Tony Award nominee book writer who it wants to write the new book and he's spectacular. Um, and we're talking directly to Amy Heckerling, uh, negotiating the rights directly with her. Um, and so, yes, that's what we're doing. Um, one of the things that you talked about, which I thought was really interesting uh, and particularly pertains to Clueless, was the challenge in developing something that was already, developing something into a musical that was already a really great film. It was already really great, yeah. yeah. We had people uh, not want to do it because it was great already. Which, which is hilarious, like but it, when, when you think about it, it makes a lot of the sense. The people who said, you know, that, that's my favorite movie. I don't want to do it. It's actually one of the reasons that I didn't do Hairspray. Yeah, you don't want to be the guy that ruins Hairspray. I, and you, know, it and you weren't. And it, was, <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> be clear, but I, I, but, but I, I, I didn't want to. I, I was like, I love this movie. I, I don't want to do it. So how did you overcome that? How, how can you, what are you doing to make it great for the stage, as great as it was as a film? Um, writing kick-ass songs. There you go. Uh, finding a deeper emotion in the story um, that maybe, you know, I, I, I think that there was, an emo there was an emotion in the story that came not from the dialogue, but you get it from like close-ups and from the performances that has to be replaced when you're on stage because you don't have close-ups and you're not and so you can't, you can't show footsie under the table or a close-up of someone looking sad. So you have to write that stuff. Um, so we're, we're, we're kind of beefing up the emotions a little bit and, and I think we're making the ending a little bit less, um, a little bit less um, tongue-in-cheek. We're not gonna go overly sincere, but we're, but we're gonna have a very, we're gonna have a very real transformation of, of this character and, and these people in this world. Um, what else are we doing? We've also reinvented the Travis character. That's exciting. And he exciting. plays a much bigger role in this. Anything that you can tell us about? He's uh, not a pothead. He's a, he's, a, um, he's a Buddhist skateboarder artist. And everyone thinks he's a pothead because he... Because 
every time he comes on stage and he and someone says, "Hey, say something for the camera," like if someone has a video camera or someone says, you know, he gets somebody's attention, he'll say these kinds of what sound like stoner poems that don't make any sense, but they're actually um, we translated um, uh, poems by Lao Tzu into um, skater lingo. I, I can't even imagine. Is there a Rosetta Stone for so, that? So, so well, we invented it. But it's like, um, a wise dude once said, bro, there's like a thousand pebbles in the half pipe, but if you try to count them, you totally have to bail. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Which is, I think the original was like, there's a thousand pebbles in the river, but if you try to count them, you'll lose your way or something like that. Well, if you need anything translated from Zen into Stoner, then Stephen Trask is your man. You're going no, no, to become skater. known for that skater. into Skater. Sorry. Um, so you've been an ASCAP member for a while. Tell me how you how you came to join. Um, I think Michael Kirker got me to join after Hedwig opened on on or off on off Broadway. Um, uh, and um, on Skid Row is actually where, where it opened. And, um, and yeah, he came down to see it and was very excited and, and, and asked, you know, asked Kevin very good to me, was very supportive of me in the beginning uh, when I wasn't making any money from performance royalties and has been very good since. Well, we're very happy to have you as a member and it was amazing having you here today. Thank you so much for oh, being here. Thank you.